When we talk about the so-called safe distance for detonating 150 kiloton nuclear charge, it was 500 meters. You remember I explained it to you. So we, yeah. when we made the nuclear explosion at the depths of 500 meters, it will create a cavity of 100 meters, and still it, there is a 400 meters of the soil. To filter. Yes, so when the ra radioactive gases will try to reach the surface by the crevices of the rock or whatever, they will be filtered on the way. And the, the thickness of filter will be like 400 meters at least. So it, it will uh, tremendously decrease the radioactivity. So but in the case of the World Trade Center was it another story because the tower was only 27 meters below surface and the position of the charge was another 50 meters. So from here to here is 77 meters and 50 meters or even a little bit more than 50 meters was occupied by the cavity. And the filter was not more than 25 meters right. compared with the 400 yes. here. But even this 25 meter would not serve actually as a filter because in the next second they just fell into the cavity and just melt there. So there was no filter at all. So all the radioactive gases escaped through the open hole just to the atmosphere. So anyone who was walking around here or Manhattan residents or the ground zero workers or whoever, when they inhaled the radioactive uh, vapor, that was the, the main source of the radioactive uh, exposure. Before we go on to talk about the medical impact, yes. let's just stay on these, this shock wave that's shot through the building, pulverizing steel, human beings, desk, computers, carpet, photographs, everything in the way, and turning it into what resembles just microscopic dust it's flying all over Manhattan and flying into the cavity. Yes, but very little percentage uh, went to the cavity. Probably maybe 85 was just scattered around Manhattan. Right. And the, the minor part went And the down. composition of that dust is either concrete or steel or it's just terribly fine. No, uh, it was not, uh, not like a plasma. Of course, you can distinguish the, the structure of actual material. And the various commissions, especially independent ones, who studied the samples of dust, yes. found that the the dust was represented mostly by the steel, fine grounded steel, because the, the major part of the tower was a steel. The yes. concrete was a very, very little compared to the steel. 200,000 tons of steel. Yes. yes. And you know that concrete compare, the, the, the volume of concrete used in the tower's construction was negligible compared to the, to the volume of steel. Because Concrete was used only in the thin slabs uh, of the floors, and nothing else than that. Okay, so so, that, so that's why the most the most part of the dust was represented by steel dust, while some minor part was also a, a, a furniture dust, carpet dust, uh, concrete dust, and of course a human being dust because human beings were reduced to the same state. You have two hundred and ten story office buildings. You don't find a desk. You don't find a chair. You don't find a telephone, a computer. The biggest piece of a telephone I found was half of the keypad, and it was about this big. The building collapsed to dust. OK, just before we move on, the cavity at this point is still an enormous temperature. Yes. 
thousands of degrees of Celsius. Thousands. It should be 8,000 and, yeah. and more than that. And that would take a long time to cool down. Yes, uh, completely cool down with the 150 kiloton, it will take at least one year. This is how it's been since day one. Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into... Um, what we thought was the core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know, it was just roaring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that, Chief? You're gonna hold, we're going to hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. It's red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see okay. what he's doing. Great. So three months later, finding molten steel yes. in the debris doesn't surprise you in no, the least? No, no, no. It's, 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 it's perfectly understandable. In fact, in your book, you say that the only explanation for molten steel three months later being in the debris is the heat generated from this blast. Yes. Because you can't sustain this kind of temperature for three months. Sure. And you discredit the um, suggestion that it might be a thermite device. <laughs> of course, because uh, that so-called thermite theory is uh, just one of the conspiracy theory born out of desperation mm. because people they cannot find the logical explanation why the, the steel tower collapsed of course they cannot believe that it was made by kerosene and uh, they cannot believe that it was made by uh, ordinary explosive because of the high temperatures that's why they arrived to the to the conclusion that it was thermite but the thermite cannot sustain that temperature for three months you can see that as in the event of electric welding, that yeah. is the thermite. Yeah. So how long it can be hot? 15 minutes? Not more than that. Okay. And also, the thermite cannot reduce steel to dust. It can melt it. Okay. Now we've got a report. I've got it here, the 911 Commission report. And there must be on the Commission staff experts and there must be, America has its own experts, but there must be experts that have looked at the same evidence that you've looked at with similar experience to you and said to themselves, that can only be one thing. It can only be a nuclear device. Yes. Because Russia's not on its own in understanding crash zones and damage zones. Americans understand them too. Of course. So they know exactly what's going on in, in, in Manhattan, and they, they know exactly what brought down the towers. Yes. But why aren't those people saying, just a minute, you know, this commission report's rubbish. It wasn't planes that brought <laughs> the towers down, it was a thermonuclear device. Okay, when, when we talk about uh, public disbelief in, in September 11 commission ravings, that is uh, understandable because more than 75% of public, maybe even perhaps more than 75% of public do not want to believe the September 11 commission. Oh, but to, uh, to reconcile oneself with the idea that it was a nuclear device is not so easy because it's just a psychological problem. Not many people, they can, can believe that the American government is capable of, of demolishing the buildings in the middle of the city by the nuclear explosion. It's, it's, it's just difficult to believe. It's just a psychological problem. Well, I would understand that. But what about, what about that secret? I mean, are these very learned and very eminent men, Lee H. Hamilton, Thomas H. Keene, Richard Ben Benisti, Bob Kerry, Fred Fielding. These are senior partners in law firms. These are presidents of universities. These are, these are patricians of note who have signed a report saying this is what's happened. Are you suggesting they're all misled? No, uh, they are not. Because the American government was in a very awkward situation. It has divided the so-called truth in a few different levels. Thank you.